Uh, here's a good question. Um, is there an easy way to explain game staging uh, to someone uh, just getting started in the recording process? And yeah, it's not that difficult, but it is very important. It's a critical stage, because if you get it wrong, you can really screw stuff up. So why don't we talk about vocals as a, as a beginning point here. If you're recording a singer, you got the mic set up, I take the mic pre, plug it straight into your uh, digital platform before you have a compressor involved. And basically, you ask them, say they're gonna sing a little of the bridge, a little of the chorus, whatever the loudest spot is, sing a little for me, you get an idea what the level's gonna be. So you basically, you adjust your mic trim so that the loudest level is probably, you know, two and a half dB below hitting a red, maybe three dB below. And the reason I, I and, and it, it depends on the singer, but invariably, when they actually sing the song, they're gonna sing louder than they sing it for you as a test. So you need a little bit of safety room so that you're covered. Now, in regards to the compressor, if you're uh, using an analog compressor, the next thing you need to do is set the threshold off and basically you want the compressor set at unity gain. What I mean by that is that when you patch it in, mic pre into the compressor, compressor into the Pro Tools, uh, you want no gain change when you punch in the compressor. Uh, because like say if the compressor gain was set down, the, it was not unity you know, gain, but it was down, then you might turn the mic pre up too high and get a, a, get a, you can actually get distortion and you wouldn't see it. So set the mic pre level first, then put the compressor at unity gain, and then you can change the threshold to get whatever level of compression you want. Now, once you've set that level, say that you find you need about three and a half to be compression of the peaks, maybe whatever it is, um, then you can turn the output gain of the compressor back up to make up for the difference in the compression. Um, the one thing I will note is that as you progress along doing the sessions, I usually keep my hand on the mic trim because invariably, as I, I find as the takes go along, a lot of times they'll get louder. And the last thing you want is to get a distorted vocal. Um, now talking about drums, um, drums are pretty high transient and kicks and snares, so you sit in those levels. If you look at it, you're coming mic pre out, once again, you're going straight into the uh, um, input of your digital platform. Uh, you t I typically on a kick or a snare, I'll set it at the loudest part of the tune, I'll set it so it's about same thing, about two and a half, three dB below the red. And there's nothing wrong with hitting a red occasionally, if you, as long as you can't hear it. I mean, most of the time you hit a couple of reds, you'll never hear it. But if you start hitting a lot of reds, you'll definitely hear it, and it's not a pleasant sound. Uh, a lot of times I'll get mixed stuff that I have to mix, and it's distorted, and it's, there's nothing I can do about it. The digital distortion is most unpleasant. And one more thing to note is, um, once you set your mic pre-gains, obviously using a digital compressor, then that's another story, because that, that's really not in the, in the analog path, it's in the digital path, and that's not an issue. You can do anything you want with that, because you can always turn it off. Uh, but in the initial recording process, the level is very important, and hopefully that uh, will give you some information. Also, if you have a chance, please subscribe to our new YouTube video channel. I'm going to answer a ton of questions. Thanks.